Hey, this is Ashley, and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic, and I'm here for my second weekly wrap-up. We are going to be talking about the week ending with January 25th, 2019, and as usual, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the K-pop world, so there's a lot to go through, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to start and talk about Bang Young Gook's Hikikomori. Okay, so first off, this is Young Gook releasing his own track. This is not something that Jungkook has not done before. This is He's released his own music before, but this is the first time that he is completely separate from TS Entertainment. He left the company. He left BAP. Did he really leave the guys? But he left the name underneath TS, and he is on his own right now. He's released Hikikomori, which is a typical Bang Jungkook style. If you haven't listened to Jungkook, then you really should. He's a fantastic writer, songwriter, and composer, and he has this own unique style. He's also written for other groups and other people, and you can really tell a Young Gook so song from others. And Hikikomori is one of those songs that sounds like Young Gook. It is fueled and driven by emotion, and it is an amazing song to listen to. One of the things that I found so amazing, and this is not just the sound of the song, but also the combination of the actual MV. But there's this feeling of calm that runs throughout this song. However, underneath that calm is this breaking point that's happening. And it's losing all control. And it's just for brief moments, you see these brief moments of just complete mania. And then it recedes back again. And it's really interesting to see. Something that's in a way extremely relatable, trying to keep everything together, but still breaking on the inside. Everything is a mess. The home is the mess. Everything is inside is a mess. But on the outside, you're calm and composed. This song is just amazing. The beat on the actual track is fantastic. Jungkook is really great with his compositions and the way that sounds mixed together. And Hikikomori is just more proof that Jungkook is amazing and an industry without him is sad. So next up, we are going to be talking a little bit about Cherry Bullet. So Cherry Bullet is a 10 girl group. They have just debuted and their title track is Q and A. And Cherry Bullet is definitely a kind of standard sound. They didn't go with something that's completely untraditional for a girl group sound. They went with the bright, poppy, a little bit quirky kind of sound, which many groups go with. I'm not a big fan of that kind of sound. There are many people that do love that sound. So for them, this song might actually be a really great song. I'm not sure what the general consensus of people thinking about Cherry Bullet at, as of right now, but personally, it's just not my style and it just doesn't work for me. Um, but the video was really bright and it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I think that over time their style could evolve. Right now it's a little bit generic, but it's also a debut. So it's understandable that they wouldn't want to do something that's too risky and instead follow something that is a more tried and true kind of sound for them to go with for their debut. Next up, we're going to go ahead and talk about In Fact. So going into this, I had a feeling that I would probably like the track. And after listening to Only You, I did like it. I'm starting to think that In Fact is, this, is one of those groups that is able to deliver consistently, makes good music, and they're just not getting a lot of attention. And it's a shame because In Fact is actually, is, they're, they're, they're good. They can dance well, they perform well, and this video was really kind of sweet, but it also was like this smooth kind of chill sound that I really enjoyed. So only you managed to deliver for me and I was actually really happy with the end result of everything. One of the elements that I really did enjoy that kind of snuck itself in was that 
even though it was pretty smooth for the most part and it kind of fell in line with what Impact does well, there was also this little funky element to it. To, and I really enjoyed the little addition of that extra sound within there that added that funk to it because it took it from just being a smooth kind of R&B-ish kind of sound to something that was just a little bit more fun. Next, we're gonna talk about Ro Taehyun. He is from A Hot Shot, and he had his first single or first mini album, and the title track was I Wanna Know. And I was actually really, really impressed. Hot Shot is not one of those groups that I know a whole lot about. I know about Hot Shot, but that's about it. I, this was a lot of fun. The track was bright, it was upbeat, and Rote Hyun was really going at it. Like it was a really enjoyable song. There was a lot of energy to the song, but it wasn't like too much. It had this nice balance where it kept everything upbeat, but it also didn't go, it wasn't too hard. It was still something that you could turn on and just listen to and relax. When I listened to this song, the first thing I thought of was that it was a perfect kind of song to listen to when you're pre-gaming. Also, I was really impressed actually seeing Taehyun dance throughout this. Like, I had known that Taehyun was a good dancer. That I didn't know about him. But I didn't realize the kind of choreography that they were going to have on this. What I kind of noticed during solo projects is that choreography tends to be not super intense throughout the song except for a dance break. That's not saying that there's no choreography, that there aren't hard moves that aren't scattered throughout, but it tends to be scaled down a bit because whoever is the main performer has to have their energy up to be able to sing at the same time. It is a logistics thing. So I was actually really surprised watching the I Wanna Know choreography because the I Wanna Know choreography is actually pretty demanding considering he's the only performer of it. So I was actually just really interested to see that level that it was pushed up on that higher level of performance that you'd see maybe with choreography for a whole group. Next up is Wavy. Wavy is a subunit of NCT. This is the Chinese unit. We've been hearing about this unit for like two years and we are finally getting their debut. There's seven guys in it. We have 10 in a group. We have Lucas. Oh my goodness. We have Kuhn. We've got a bunch of the guys. Some of the guys that we've been waiting to see in an actual group are finally here and it's really, really nice. <sighs> but with Wavy, it is this Chinese unit and they delivered with this song that I was like, having feels so other than the fact that my win-win baby was getting lines like they really have this r&b smooth sound that they delivered i really really enjoyed it it actually is probably one of my favorites and may possibly become my absolute favorite in ct title track the actual video was pretty chill. It was cute. It was amusing. Nothing that was really crazy or anything that like stunned me with what happened, but I liked it. I enjoyed it, but it was really the song that shone for this. The song was just amazing. So briefly, I'm going to talk about Yang Yosub's 20 Full Moons, which is two tracks. It's a little single album that he released for fans because he enlisted. It was a really, really nice single album, really pretty. Um, I don't wanna call them ballads because they were, the tempo was a little bit above a ballad, but they were slower songs. They were like slow mid-tempo songs. That's kind of the range that they were at. They'd either be considered slow mid-tempo or fast ballads, but they were really, really pretty. And it really gave Yosub's voice a chance to shine, which if you did not already know, he has an amazing voice. So it was really nice to get this little gift from him before he went off. And I really appreciate it 
and I'm going to miss him. He's, in case you did not know, he is my highlight bias. I absolutely I love that cherub man. He's He's amazing. It is time for 17, which may be the highlight for some people, but 17 released their comeback. It has been quite a while, and we have finally received their next album. The title track is Home, and listen, my baby Ming Hao got lines. He got lines. I mean, obviously Ming Hao always gets some lines here and there, but I feel like the number of lines that he gets, the percentage, the ratio was up just a little bit. I really would have to see the numbers, but I was really happy to see Ming Hao up in the front and delivering, and I love Ming Hao. But overall, this song is a, it's, it's chill. It reminds me of a previous title track that they had. Um, it's that kind of similar style. It is still very much home and its own, but um, it does sound, remind me a little bit of a previous track. Home is a really great song. I really enjoy it. It fits well within the album. I will say that before I watched the video, I had actually already listened to the song. I listened to the album, the full album, a bunch of times before I went and watched the video. So I already knew what to expect from the song, so it didn't really shock me so much. However, what I will say <laughs> is that after listening to the album and going from Good To Me, which is probably my favorite song on the album, to Home, I felt like it was a step down. I was just like, man, couldn't Good To Me have been the title track and then Home just one of the other tracks? So that was the effect that I got because Good To Me really just from the instant it came on, it was my song. But Home, don't get me wrong, is a great song as well. It's just when you stick something that you absolutely love next to something that you really, really, really like, one is gonna come out on top. And that's just what ended up happening this time around. But overall, the album is just actually kind of fantastic. Um, so like I said, Good To Me is my favorite track, but I also really, really love Chili. Chili is a really fun song. And I also like Shh, which is, gives me a trip whenever I listen to it. The song is mastered in a normal way. It startles me every time I listen to it because the whistle in the song is really loud compared to the rest of the song. It stands out a lot and that throws me off every so often. Um, but other than that, I really do love the song. And then also we have Getting Closer, which we had already had it had been performed previously, and I think they released the video for Getting Closer before Home and everything. So Getting Closer was one of those songs that we already knew, and I really like Getting Closer. It's one of those songs that gets me, it gets me in the mood, gets me hyped, gets me excited, get, it makes me happy. Um, but yeah, that is what I thought of Seventeen. They, they just do it every single time. And while I am kind of at this kind of point where I also want Seventeen to try something a little bit new. It's not because they're not doing amazing and they're not putting out songs and albums that are some of my absolute favorites. It's because I know that Seventeen can do even more and I want them to push themselves and try new things too. So yeah, but that is the week in K-pop this week. Let me know what you thought of the things down below in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.